Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome back to the next episode of the Little Bean and Me podcast. It's been two weeks. I didn't film last week for, if you're in the United States, for some obvious reasons. I just wanted to take a week off. Uh, my daughter also had the day off from school last Friday, so it really wasn't a good day to film. Today she's in school, but this week we're dealing with illness. She was sick earlier this week. I have a slight cold right now, and then my son has spiked a fever today, so we've had a little bit of a rough morning. I wasn't even sure if this was going to happen, so I'm just going to take this opportunity, film now. Hopefully I get this up for you guys today on Friday. Today's Friday. Uh, it's the week before Thanksgiving, which is really fun. I'm looking forward to our celebrations next week. We do a nice Friendsgiving with our friends. Uh, we're doing that the day before Thanksgiving. And then on Thanksgiving, we're hosting my mom and my brother, uh, my dad and his wife, if they want to come. They usually spend Thanksgiving with her mom, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, so it should be a nice week next week. I'm kind of glad we're getting illness done this week so that we can just relax and enjoy the time with family. So anyways, tangent. Welcome back. I hope you've been well these last couple of weeks. As you can see behind me, I have uh, quite a bit of things to share with you today. And so I'm going to try and keep this, as always, as succinct as possible. Uh, but if you don't know who I am, uh, welcome. My name is Kayleen. I am your host of this podcast. This is a little podcast about yarn dyeing, which is what I do. Um, I do all of these things, <laughs> but it's what I do as, you know my craft hobby sales I don't know <laughs> what I like to do it's my creative outlet uh, for everybody and um, so I'm a yarn dyer I also share about crocheting I'm learning how to knit um, I spin I'm also learning how to spin which when I started this podcast some odd episodes ago back in the summer uh, I was talking about oh maybe I'll start spinning and of course I do pardon the noise the truck uh, so we talk about yarn dyeing, crocheting, knitting, spinning, general craftiness. Uh, if there's anything interesting that's going on, I entertain your questions if you have them for me, and I share a little bit about myself and my shop and kind of what I'm doing. So uh, let's just get into everything. So as you can see behind me, I have a ton of things uh, that I've been working on all week. I haven't done a ton of yarn dyeing this week. I was waiting for a bit of a shipment to come in, but here's what is happening. So I will announce this right now, out of the blue, beginning right now. I'm not having a shop update this week. I also did not have a large one last week. It was very small, just a few skeins, um, and I didn't announce it. But next weekend is Black Friday and Small Business Saturday, and I definitely put plan to participate in small business Saturday so I am going to have my shop update next Saturday I am timing this update to have it launch at 9 a.m. Eastern time we are by Boston so if you google what time is it now in Boston you will get a, um, a taste of the time difference from where you are to where I am so I'm gonna launch my shop update next Saturday at 9 a.m. I am going to have a special prize addition to your package if you're the first if you're one of the first um, 10 people who places an order with me on Saturday also there will be a coupon code that will be active in the morning and then a coupon code that will be active in the afternoon I'm pretty sure I'll make the cutoff at noontime so from 9 to 12 there will be a certain coupon code and then from 12 until the end of the day will be the second coupon code I haven't decided how much I'm going to make them yet, but I really want to incentivize you guys to come and shop in my shop for the holidays. Um, you know, to get high quality, beautiful yarns at a reasonable price. Um, you know, I charge, I charge what I charge because it's an art what I do. So I'm charging not only for the materials, but for the time. And so on Saturday next week, I'm going to be offering a deep discount so that you can get the yarn that you want. If you're a person shopping for someone else, if you're shopping for yourself, you should be able to enjoy the same yarn that everybody else is enjoying 
if you want it. So I'm going to try and dye as much as I can for next Saturday morning, have as many listings on as many bases as I can uh, for you guys. And then also behind me as part of my finished objects, I'm going to have a special section in my shop where I'll have some crafted items for sale and a portion of those, the, the gross amounts, whatever I list it for, say I list a cow for $30. Uh, I, I'm thinking 20%, I'm gonna do a 20% cutoff where 20% of that gross amount, not counting if you use a coupon or whatever, if it's selling for $30, 20% of that $30 is going to go to uh, Boston Children's Hospital. I wanna make a large donation for the holiday season. And so I'm crafting some items that you may like to give to someone else, but you can also purchase it and then a portion of those proceeds are going to go to Boston Children's Hospital. They have uh, great teams there for all specialties. It's one of the highest rated hospitals in the nation. Uh, my friend, her son has really complex food allergies. She's a patient of one of the allergists there and she is awesome. So I wanna be able to donate to a cause like that, um, to a hospital that I know is high quality caliber care who can use the money to further um, medical care for kids. So. That is what's gonna happen. <laughs> so now that's out of the way, next Saturday is a big update. There are several things going on. I'm gonna be posting on Instagram through next week to try and get all of this information out to you in different media. If you don't follow me here, if you follow me on Instagram, um, you'll know all of those things. And as always, I always put the information on the screen here for you. So discounts in the morning, special prizes for the first people who are going to be shopping with me, so early birds, there'll be coupons all day, and then there's going to be a special section of crafted items that will be for sale, and then I think 20% of those proceeds are going to go to Boston Children's Hospital as a direct donation, so that's everything. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's get into um, let's get into dyeing. So I haven't done a ton of dyeing this week, but you might see right there behind me, um, there's a special surprise hank that I am working on as a collaboration with Lynn over at the Sunshine and Bubblegum podcast. We are doing a gift set. Please focus. Here we go. Uh, we're doing a gift set where she's crafting the bags. They're drawstring bags. I am dyeing the coordinating yarn skeins. Look at that. And we're including little special um, knickknacks and presents in there. That will also launch next Saturday. So there's going to be a lot. If you're looking for something for someone, for yourself, next Saturday is going to be the day to shop in my shop. So these are the skeins. This is a nice little sneak preview. I think I'm going to call these peppermint swirl, even though they could be applicable for Valentine's Day. But it's a lovely ombre dyed skein. So this should pull up like a peppermint candy cane if you're stitching this into a sock so these will be available in those kits only um yeah I haven't talked to Lynn whether I will put this also separately if you only want to skein but for now these are going to be in the kits only there will only be a few kits and then the other dyeing that I've done are on three bases that I've been testing one is a bulky base, which I'm very much liking. This is a new colorway. I haven't named it yet. It's a very gray taupe, taupey mauve type color. It has like pink undertones, like peachy pink undertones. It is the same color that is in my 11 gradient. Um, if you've ever checked out my shop and you see the 11 gradient where it goes from this gray mauve color into um, a navy, this is the bulb color so i wanted to offer this as a tonal so this is the bulky base 106 yards per 100 grams i like this base i'm going to show you a cowl that i stitched up for next week on this base it's squishy it is so it's so squishy it's a three ply so it's a nice round yarn and when you stitch it up at least when i crocheted it up it is like it's like butter it's like butter <laughs> it's just so like 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 it's just so squishy so that is one base that will be launched next saturday um these i'm not sure when these will be launched i'm still kind of testing these out i only ordered one one bag of each so i order, only ordered 10 skeins of each for my own dyeing purposes but these are tweed yarns so this is a tweed Aaron weight yarn in that same color and then this is a tweed 
sock weight yarn. I haven't named the colorway, nor have I named this base yet. Um, I haven't named the bulky base yet. <laughs> so <laughs> you're catching me on a, I haven't named any of these things yet. The, uh, the tweed base, it's actually not an ecru or like a cream colored base. It's actually a, a gray toned base. It's like, it's more toward gray than cream. It's still a neutral, but it's um, it's not as gray as the Yak base, but it is an interesting neutral base. So this is the bulky, and then Aran weight and fingering weight, tweed, tweed, and they're all so soft. Like I'm never disappointed when I order the bases I want for my supplier. I am always very happy with what I get. Um, so. I'm still testing with the tweed. I still have to name the tweed and decide when I'm going to launch it. But Bulky Base will also be out next Saturday. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of things happening next Saturday. So that's the dyeing that I've done this week. Um, aside from doing custom orders and all of those things that have rolled in, I've had four or five orders for the Burrow mini skein set. I'll pop a picture if I feel like editing. I don't know if I will, but I'll pop a picture up here. Um, it's just a palette of minis, mini skeins, and I posted it on Instagram and I immediately got like four orders for it in my dyed, my dyed to order section. So I was busy dyeing minis this week. Okay, so finished objects and works in progress in terms of crochet knitting. I have one whip. Crochet, I have two whips. And then crochet, I have a bunch of finished objects. I also have some spinning that's in progress and some things to share on spinning as well. So we will start with finished objects. So I stitched up some hats this week. This is in the ooh, Woolies Thick and Quick. This was for my son because I'm trying to find a hat that fits him well because his head is so large. But the problem with just stitching up a hat is that I didn't put any tassels or any way to tie it under his chin so he literally just throws it off of his head so this is the hat for my son I also stitched up a white one uh, with some scrap simple DK I just tripled it to make it a bulky weight but yeah so I stitched this hat for him it's a basic half double cr single crochet beanie single crochet beanie with a half double uh, rib where it's um, front post and back post double crochet. Not from a pattern, just from my own. Okay, so the next things I have, so these cowls are going to be what I'm posting as charity items for next Saturday's small business update. Um, I'm still st I'm stitching more cowls. I'm just gonna be stitching cowls all week from my stash yarns, from my hand dyed yarns, from my hand spun yarns. Um, they're perfect gifts for people who, if you're in need of a nice gift for someone, they're perfect for Christmas. Um, it's just a little something. And then 20% of these proceeds are going to be going to Boston Children's Hospital as a donation. I think um, I will continue, starting on Small Business Saturday, I think I will continue it until probably the week before Christmas. So as long as I can keep stitching up cowls and people are interested in purchasing them before Christmas, um, I will keep stitching them and then I'll make a donation right before Christmas. I think that's how I'm going to work it. So this is the first cowl I stitched. This is a basic linen stitch, a linen stitch cowl. It is a double stranded cowl. It's made from my yak, my bare yak yarn, and then the single of uh, Slytherin Common Room just held together. This is, I'll put these on so then you can see the fit of what they look like. So this is the first cowl. It always looks funny because I'm always wearing a, a v-neck, but here's the first fit. It's a more snug fit. I know everybody is different with what they like. So these are all gonna be different sizes, different heights, but it's easily pulled up on the face. It has a nice, um, I look like a burglar or something. Uh, but yeah, it can be slouched down. I'm sorry, I'm looking up too because I'm trying to see, but. It can be slouched down, it can be worn up. So this is the first one. Again, it is the Superwash, 100% Superwash Merino plied up, held double stranded with the um, the Yak Base, which is 70% Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Nylon. So it is, 
I, I always recommend hand washing for um, hand stitch items. So this is it. And I'm going to include dimensions in my shop update next week. This is the second cowl. This is a shorter cowl. But this is made with hand spun. So this was some of my first really nice hand spun. It came out to be an errand to bulky weight. But this was made from the uh, Vattersvelt Farm Fall Festival colorway. Um, she sent me a bunch of Rolags. I have some left. But this is what I did with it. It does have Angelina in it, so it's a little sparkly. You can see some more sparkly bits down here. But it is just all the tones of fall. Some burnt orange, greens, blues, reds, yellows, kind of all blended together. So I'll put it on so you can see. This is 100% superwash merino. So this is a shorter cowl. It's got a little more give now I'm an average so I'm short but I'm pretty average sized for a woman so that these would fit you know, your average woman so this is the fit it's not as snug as the other one but it's also linen stitch so it has a nice fall to it it's it's not going to just disintegrate on itself it will stand up well enough but it's one that kind of falls more toward the chin area versus being able to pull it up over your chin. The next cowl that I have finished, um, I posted these two on Instagram. It's a taller cowl, but this is also made with hand spun. I purchased uh, two ounces of Rolags from the Classy Squid Fiber Company that I spun up and then I crepe plied with my yak yarn and my um, Slytherin Common Room singles. So I made kind of a three-ply crepe style yarn. It almost looks like I've held it together, but I actually spun it into a physical yarn. This is Polworth, and then the Yak Yarn, and 100% Merino. This is a taller cowl. As you can see, it's much taller than any of the other cowls. I could literally just live in it like this. <laughs> um, but there's merino and yak. Again, you can have it be down or up, but it has a nice, it will stay up. I mean, this stays up on me. Again, I look like a robber. But this will be in the shop as well. It's got this nice striping effect. It is black and going into a green, going into a purple, going into a black. So that is that. And then the last one that is finished here, this is a test crochet for the Fiber of Being Kim Simpson. Um, she has a bulky cowl that's going to be coming out soon. The pattern will be coming out soon. Now this is like the ultimate squish. So this is a very open cowl. It doesn't stay up as easily. You might have to fiddle with it a little bit but it is the squishiest, like, oh yeah, I guess it'll stay up. It is very squishy, very airy feeling, very soft. This was done in my new bulky base, which is the softest thing ever, but it has this nice detail. This is uh, dirigible plums. This is the color, right? Dirigible, dirigible plums. So it's this lovely peach color with flecks of orange and purple. It's very, it's not bright, but it's nicely saturated as a peach, peach color. Um, but it has this lovely star stitch detail, which comes out just gorgeous. I'm not going to talk about the pattern because it's still in testing. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to include this in the update. I have to talk to her to see if it's okay if I sell this cowl. But... Uh, obviously giving her credit for the pattern. This pattern will be out soon. It's still in testing, but it's beautiful, soft, squishy. So those are the cowls I've completed this week. Then as far as works in progress, other cowls, <laughs> it's pretty much cowls. It's the cowl along here. Maybe I should do a cowl along. So here's another linen stitch cowl. This is probably halfway done. This is done in the Daffodil Colorway by Cascade. This is Cascade 128 Superwash, which is also a very soft, superwash, bulky, bulky wool. 
It's a two ply wool, so I have enough here to do two, two cowls, which is what I think I will do. And then there's this one, which the needle is still in. Okay, sorry, my apologies if the camera angle changed. My um, memory card ran out in the middle of me speaking, so I still had my, my needle was stuck in here. So the last work in progress that I have for crochet cowls is made in this yarn, which is Cascade Yarn Specific Blend, which is 40% superwash merino and 60% acrylic. It is surprisingly soft, uh, very squishy. I am doubling up the yarn to create the chunky cowl. So I've started on this same chunky cowl that I just showed you here. I'm starting on another one. I'm not sure about the gauge. Yeah, it's coming a little bit wider than my original, but I think it's because this yarn is just slightly thicker as a doubled up um, skein. So it will fall a little more, but it'll be very soft and squishy just as soft and squishy as this. So um, that is my last crochet work in progress. In terms of knitting, I have one that I've worked on this week. Yes, I've had time to knit. Um, this is the Coastline Shawl. So those who've been watching for a little while will recognize the shawl. I did stop in the middle of a row, so it's gonna be difficult to show you everything. But this Coastline Shawl, the last place that I showed you that I was working on was right about here. I didn't place a marker, but I had finished probably four or five repeats of this garter stitch section, which I've now finished, done some striping from the pattern, and then I have begun the lace repeats. So I'm starting on this section here. I am probably 50% done with this shawl. This is going to be a slow knit because I have to pick it up, be able to pick it up and put it down. I did stop in the middle of the row, but I know exactly where I am. So it is coming along nice. This is done in my MCN base. This is a color that's not available anymore. This is Mrs. Hudson. It was a one-time color. This is the Bear Yak yarn, which I absolutely love. This is the lace detailing. You can see it here. Uh, both are fingering weight, and this is being stitched on my U.S. size 5 Carbons uh, Long Circulars. These are 40 inch circulars, and that's about it. That's what I am working on in terms of knit. That's how far I've gotten. So I think I got maybe 2 or 3 inches up from where we spoke last. But it takes me maybe 20 minutes. To go down a row because of interruptions and all of that and if I was just stitching straight it probably would take me 10 minutes but that is that okay and then let's go to spinning so in terms of spinning I have figured out how to Navajo ply on my drop spindle which has been great so you've seen some of the spinning work I've done this week which I've stitched up. So this is kind of like a hybrid finished object. I spun this, plied it, and then stitched it. Um, it's been soaked and washed, blocked, as has this. So I spun, um, spun, and then plied, and then soaked, and then stitched. So those are both finished spinning and finished crochet. And then here is my next project. So this spinning that I'm working on right now is being spun Navajo plied on my spindle. So as you can see, I have my spinning right here. And then from here down is being, it has been plied. So what will happen is, there it is. We got a nice shot. This is a lovely green. This was sent to me by um, Vattersfelt Farm. This is on my Lucky Plug Farm spindle. Um, this is made of Dorset sheep. And there's some Angelina in there for sparkle. There's some green and gold Angelina. So it's a very Christmas type colorway. So I'm hoping to have this spun and plied and stitched up before next Saturday as another cowl, as a hand spun cowl. It is surprisingly soft. I mean, if you're super sensitive to wool, you might not like this, 
Um, in terms of plant, like spinning and plying, it feels very hairy and soft. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I'm not a spinning guru, but it has like a much, you can see there's like a halo that comes off this a little bit. It's hard to tell on the camera, but it's a very fuzzy yarn. So it might be a little bit irritating if you're super sensitive. Got some Angelina. It's spinning very nicely. So this is the fiber. These are the roll lags she sent to me as an extra in my package, which I am loving spinning up. I didn't weigh it beforehand. I assume it's around two ounces or three ounces of fiber. So I'll show you a little how I spin. I've been spinning very well lately. This I am spinning. So I've learned a lot about plying and how you spin yarn versus plying yarn. Commonly, people will spin Z, which means spinning clockwise, and they will ply S, which is counterclockwise. And if you look at the yarn, the way the strands twist around each other is either in a Z, where the angle goes from, I'll show you this way, um, where the angle goes like a Z, where it goes from right to left, and then S goes from left to right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so if you draw an S, the angle at which, well, for you guys, it's like this. So it would look like this versus this. So the way I spin, which I suppose, supposedly is good for crocheters, is I spin S. So I spin counterclockwise, and that's the way I've always spun is I spin and I guess I don't know if I do this backwards too um, that I'm drafting out with my right hand and holding the yarn in my left hand like holding the the fiber in my left hand um, so yeah my goal is always to spin pretty consistently and as thinly as possible so once I'm done spinning I kind of loop it over my fingers to backtrack and then this is where the magic happens. So I've created a loop that I can't show you because it's in my lap. So Navajo plying is a three ply technique. It's also called chain plying. So here's the little loop that I'm holding with my hand. Here's my spun single. I'm going to pull my spun single through the loop like so you can't see what I'm doing right now but I'm just pulling it through the loop and then I'm pulling the single up so that the length is equal so as you can see I have three strands here one is pulled through the loop and the other is the loop itself so we, I pulled the string through the loop one is in the loop and the rest is outside so now I'm going to ply. So I ply in a Z direction. I'm going to remove and see if it's balanced. It is not. Uh, and then this is how you three ply on a drop spindle. So that is pretty balanced. I'm going to wind it up, secure my loop. This is not a tutorial, by the way. I'm, I've only just learned how to do this. <laughs> but it is like life changing because I hate plying on a drop spindle when you have so much fiber, like doing it all at once. So I put the loop back on my hook and then I'm going to put my single back on and then draft and spin. But yeah, this yarn feels hairy. Like it feels like I almost thought, I had to ask Amanda what the fiber was because I almost thought that it was a um, alpaca and I can't handle alpaca, it gives me like a really bad itchy face and itchy nose. But apparently this is Dorset. I've never spun Dorset, this is my first time spinning it. I'm spinning over my head now. <laughs> Part of my armpit. Okay, so there's my single. Which is spun about my fingering weight. I take the loop off my, oh, I got it back up. I kind of secure my single here so I don't lose it. Um, 
pull the loop off my hook. Get my finger in there. So this is chain plying. So you pull, here's the loop. Here's the loop. Here's my single. And I'm going to pull the single through my loop. And I like to, whoops, I like to put my loop back over the spindle so I don't lose it while I'm pulling my single through. Give me your single. All right, so my single's through my loop, and now I'm gonna pull up my single until the height matches, because I'm gonna be three-plying this. Oops. Come, 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 come. Okay. So I'm just pulling, this is what's through the loop. This is the rest of my single. So I'm just kind of lining it up to be the same height. And now I'm going to put the entire thing, the entire thing has gone now onto my hook here. Now I'm going to ply it together. And then what I found being very helpful doing this technique is unwinding slightly to make sure that the yarn is balanced after I ply it. Um, because you're plying as you go. So, so then you can see where the ply ends here. Come back. This is very sloppy, but I'm sorry. So you can see where the ply ends here. Here's where I pulled the yarn. This was the yarn that was through the loop. This was the yarn that's on top here was my remaining yarn. And so now this piece of the yarn becomes my new loop. So it's almost like making a crochet chain as you go up, up, up. So now I hook my loop, my new loop, onto my hook here. So I've hooked the loop on separately from the, from the new um, single that I'm going to spin. So that's pretty much how it goes the whole entire time. I don't know how much I'm going to edit out of that, but if you think about it, it's just like making a crochet chain, and I'll kind of show you with this. So, if you're thinking about the mechanics of the chain ply, what it will be is here's your loop, and then normally if you're doing this on a wheel, it's easier, but you're pulling through your loop, your single through until it matches to where you've finished. So we're gonna pretend like this is the top of my single. So you pull it through the loop until it's where your single has finished. And then you ply, and then this top, once it's plied, feel you focus please. Once it's plied, this becomes the new loop, and then the next part you pull through, you pull your next piece through the chain. Do, 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 until you stop so that it becomes like one large crochet chain. It's really interesting. You should look, um, there's a better tutorial. This is not a tutorial by the way. I'm very sorry if you're trying to follow along. I'm just trying to explain as best I can what I figured out but I will link a really good tutorial down below. It is what I used to learn how to do this but once you learn how to do it, if you hate plying on a drop spindle, you're just gonna be like mind blown because that's exactly how I was. Um, but yeah, so, and I'm also in chats. I might be getting a wheel soon. Um, so yeah, that's really about it. That's what I've been working on all week. I've just been trying to crochet a lot. I've been trying to do as much prep work as I can for next Saturday. Um, so again, uh, if you, Kind of zoned out or left the room or anything for the beginning of the podcast i explained i'm not doing a shop update this week i will be doing a shop update next saturday which is small business saturday here in the united states it will be at 9 a.m eastern time which is my time zone i am close by boston so if you google what time is it in boston you will be able to see what i have um, you'll be able to see what time you should tune in to my shop for the update. Um, so it's international friendly. Uh, I always ship internationally. 
So if you have something that you're eyeing, a colorway that you like and you're overseas and you really want to see it and get it, um, now is the shop up date to do it because it is nice and early in the morning so it should not be too late at night for you. So the shop update will be next Saturday, Small Business Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. There will be several things going on. For the first 10 orders, I'm going to be including a special bonus in your package. Um, probably will be some kind of mini skein, stitch marker, combo. I haven't decided exactly what it will be, but it will be something nice, something a little extra to say thank you. Um, <clears throat> From 9 a.m. to 12, there will be one coupon code that's going to be for, I haven't decided yet how much, um, but I'm going to include, so for those who like to shop early, who want to get in there early, um, I will include a coupon code from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. noontime for a certain denomination, and then a coupon code for the rest of the day from 12 p.m. on until midnight um, when it expires. So the best bet is to shop early um, get to get what you want to get. So you get the highest discount. I want to make sure that everybody can get exactly what they want. The things that will be in the shop. There will be a new bulky base that is launched for all my dye to order that I will be dyeing up in various colorways that I showed you here. This is one new colorway that will be in the shop. Um, I haven't named it yet. I haven't named the bulky base yet because it's been a crazy week, but this will be in the shop from various colors. Um, the other thing that will be in the shop are these gift sets. That is a, a collaboration effort between myself and Lynn over at the Sunshine and Bubblegum podcast. These will be yarn gift sets. These will include the yarn, the bag, a coordinating mini skein for heels and toes, um, probably a stitch marker, probably some other goodies in there. I like to, if I'm offering a gift set, I like to offer other things not just the yarn in the bag so um, look out for this look out for this and then in a special section there will be some crafted cowls that I will be donating parts of the proceeds to Boston Children's Hospital as a donation for the holiday season so I wanted to sell some of these hand stitch things before the holidays so that if you have if you're looking for a gift for a loved one so you see something that they would like that a portion of those proceeds Regardless of your discount, um, if I list something for $30, it will be 20% of $30. Uh, we'll be going to Boston Children's Hospital. So I have several cowls that I finished here. I'll include measurements. I also tried them on this episode so you can see the different fits, feels of them. Um, so that will be in the shop update as well. <laughs> so we have gifts, coupons, we have gift sets, we have crafted items, and we have a new base all being rolled out next Saturday. So please, please, please keep your eyes on Instagram. That is where I always announce things. I also cross post to Facebook. So if you follow me on Facebook, it's there as well. Or if you're in any of the yarn groups on Facebook, you may see me posting there. But direct from the horse's mouth is on Instagram. So you can always follow me there to get the latest information. Um, oh, and there's one more thing. So I closed out my Halloween cow a couple of weeks ago. I closed it when I said I was going to close it. Uh, I have yet to draw a winner. There are only three people who entered, so I'm thinking about just sending a little something to each of you um, instead of drawing a random winner uh, because you guys put the effort in and even I didn't stitch something for Halloween, so I think you guys deserve a little bit of something. So be on the lookout. I will chat with you on Ravelry. Just have to get around to it. So I have not forgotten about you. Anyway, that is everything. It's a lot, I know, but I'm hoping that it will be a nice uh, shop update next week, that you'll be able to get some yarns for yourself, yarns for people that you love, gifts for people that you love, so uh, please be on the lookout, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'm sorry I'm a little sick. I feel a little distracted today, but <laughs> what can you do? We're not, we're not perfect all the time, you know. So uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a great week next week. And we, I will see you next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. So I will have a podcast next Friday. 
I should be able to film a podcast, I hope. If not, then I will see you Saturday morning at 9 a.m. in my shop for the update. Lots of lovely things. So have a great week. I'm very excited for next week and I will chat with you soon. Bye.